just say a few words and if uh, the feedback goes a bit too much, I'm going to put this down. So, firstly, to say to everybody, welcome. You're all more than welcome here today. And on behalf of um, my lovely wife, Sarah, and I, I would like to say that I hope everybody is having a good time and you're all keeping your glasses full because after the year behind us, dear God, we all deserve a good party and a bit of a celebration. So, I want everyone to know that like, we're a small group here and there's 50 of us and that's not what Sarah and I would have liked. We'd have loved to have a big group, but we have 50 here and we know that what we lack in numbers we're going to make up with extra oomph, extra go and extra enthusiasm on the night. So keep your glasses full because we're going to have a few toasts. Um, first one, is, firstly to have echo a few thank yous. And our first thank you is to our bridesmaid, Mags, wherever Mags is. Mags, stand up so everyone can see you. So first thing is to say thank you, Mags, for your support to Sarah. Uh, you've been tremendous. And any problems, Sarah would always ring Mags. And the problem will be sorted because Mags always knows what to do. <laughs> so, and uh, so I'd like to also um, Desmond, if you'd like to stand up, my best man, my brother Desmond. So thank you, Desmond, for always having my back. And so to our bridesmaid and our best man, you're both looking dapper and lovely today. Um, so the next thank you is going to be to Ma'am and to Dad. So as Dad said, we've waited a long time for this, and I think both sides have waited a long time for this, and it's a big day for both of us. And I just want to say to Ma'am and Dad, thank you. Thank you seems you know, not enough for all these wonderful people have done for me over the years. I mean, I wouldn't be standing here today. I mean, um, through thick, through thin, they've always had my back. And I just want to say that I couldn't be prouder to stand up here in front of all of our friends and all of our family and to say how proud I am to be your son and to be here today with you. A few words then on to thank Maureen and Des, thank you for the warm welcome you've given me right from the very start. You've always made me feel one of the fan, one of the crowd, and thank you for raising Sarah to be such a decent, hard-working, caring, compassionate, dedicated person. And when I first met Sarah, I was just blown away, and it's a, it's a reflection on ye and how you've raised her to be the one she is today. And I want to say as well that Desmond's birthday is today, which we didn't know when we booked the wedding. Well, I didn't know Sarah knew. So. <laughs> So I don't know about any of you, but if in years to come, it happens to be my birthday, and if I have a daughter getting married, and it's not a global pandemic, we might sing happy birthday, but in the absence of that, we might just put our hands together in a round of applause for Des Cullen on his birthday. So, <laughs> and previous speeches have mentioned those who couldn't be here today, and so firstly, to say a few mentions to people whose ill health prevent them from coming. The first is my Auntie Kitty, who I visited this morning in Lachine. Our mission, I'm getting so hard me, so <laughs> Norwood Grange. And Maura, my auntie who's not well at the moment, is in hospital. We wish her well and speedy recovery. And to Berna, my aunt in Texas, who was willing, she was going home to come, but the mind was willing, but the body wasn't able. So she's not great in health, but she tuned in on the webcam and rang immediately afterwards. So. She's here with us in spirit, and we'll send her the video afterwards, so <laughs> she told me she'd stay up all night in case she slept in, just to make sure she saw it live. <laughs> and a special mention to Sarah's granny, who's been mentioned, and I know uh, how close Sarah is to her grandparents and to all her family, and it's, it's one of the things that, that made me fall in love with her. Her bond with family is so similar to my own, uh, in the fact that we would walk, you know, we'd do anything for each other, which is just lovely. And I'd like to mention again, we're 50 here, but there's a lot of people who couldn't be here because they passed on. So I'd like to ask everyone to please stand to join me in a toast. And this is a toast to our absent friends. And I'm not going to name them by name because there were so many and you know who we're talking about. So to absent friends. Absent friends. Okay. I'm going to move on to talk a little bit about myself and Sarah now, so I suppose it is our wedding I might say a few words. <laughs> and the first is to say that Sarah and I, one of the things I think we found we had in common at the very start is a common love of the ocean. Sarah loves to look at the sea and I love to be on the sea, so it's a perfect combination. <laughs> and um, Sarah's love of the ocean developed, was mentioned earlier, um, she's had so many happy summers in the Hook Peninsula, 
uh, in Wexford, an area of the world I didn't know too, too well before I met Sarah, but I was just, it's, an, it's a part of the world you should all get to know, because it's just beautiful. And uh, my love of the ocean developed uh, through many childhoods, boating with my uncle Frank, wherever he is, and the rest of, there he is, and the rest of the family in Kinsale. And Kinsale holds a very special place in, in the hearts of all my family members. So we have Kinsale, and Sarah and her family have the hook. And I think, I often think of Christy Moore's song that was sung at the church today. And it was just, you know, the voyage, I just love the song. Uh, so I have to build it in here somewhere. And uh, so, it, like Christy sings that life is an ocean and that love is the boat. And that in troubled waters it keeps us afloat. And I just love that line, it's always resonated with me. And I think if today is a day on the ocean, then it's, it's a day of calm seas and plain sailing for me and Sarah, or for Sarah and I, and it's a day as close to a perfect day as we could wish for under the circumstances, having 50 of our closest friends, family here with us. And I'm going to just uh, cast, or to say as well, I'd like to cast my mind back to when I first met Sarah. And when I first met Sarah, I remember I was so impressed with a girl with such a warm smile and comes across so unassuming and quiet, but she's so hardworking, dedicated, determined, and I just fell in love very, very quickly. Uh, what I found out what Sarah did as a, a bereavement midwife, again, my awe of her just deepened. And she's not the only bereavement midwife in the room today. We have two of her <laughs> colleagues down here. So, Debbie and Brenda. So, can I ask everyone to just put your hands together for the amazing work these two are doing, please. So if I'm thinking back to over five years ago when I first met Sarah, and they often say that you don't marry the person that you can live with, you marry the person you can't live without, and, and that's where we are today. And they say that, and I believe it's really true, I mean, when our first one, of, we've had so many happy times over the last five years, and I have simply, epic is the only word for the memories of us bringing in my birthday in a downtown karaoke bar in Osaka, Japan, with Sarah giving a very spirited rendition of Stevie Wonder's Happy Birthday on the Machine and the staff honking down free sack in front of me in honour of the event and there are video recordings for that for anybody very interested <laughs> and I love, grown to love our traditions and Sarah and I have many traditions built over the last five years and the first one I'm going to mention is our birthday tradition and we developed the tradition of bringing the other person away to a surprise location for their birthday and took a bit of trust for Sarah at the start, and I said, I'm whisking you away and don't ask any questions. But <laughs> And I remember one of the first, I put Sarah in the car, and I said, we're just going to start driving. And after two hours of driving, she was guessing and guessing and guessing, and she was furiously guessing. We arrived in Belfast, she was still guessing. Arrived at the ferry port, she was still guessing. And then we, I remember I lined the car up for the Isle of Man ferry, and suddenly the penny dropped, and she, like, quick as a flash, took out the phone, and she started researching Isle of Man Ferry, or Isle of Man, which she barely knew anything about the Isle of Man, only that it was somewhere off Ireland. And I was so impressed because by the time we boarded the ferry, Sarah had the entire itinerary done. She had researched the best place to go, the best place to see, the best place to eat, the best place to drink, the best most sea sites, and that is Sarah, the most organized person I've ever met. And while at times it might drive me slightly crazy, I wouldn't change Sarah for all the world. And I love our tradition of fancy balls on New Year's Eve, and New Year's Eve sometimes can be anticlimactic, so very early on we decided we'd start doing black tie balls, or fancy balls, and we, our first one of these was in the Mansion House in Dublin, and it was circus lay themed, and I still remember us on the dance floor, and they were counting down the New Year's, and there was acrobatics literally spinning over our heads, and as the song boomed out, and the new year was in, I remember feeling there was just a touch of magic here. And that magic is never left, it's still here. Oh. Uh, all, all I can say is that all those happy times are at the tip of the iceberg, and they're, they're not a reflection of the past. Those happy times are a reflection of the future, and all the happy times that lie ahead for both of us. And I look forward to sharing them with you, Sarah. And when it comes to the, the calibre of this lady, it never ceases to amaze me. And I'm not going to go into the, the, the sea of life, the thick and thin, because 
As every sailor, and we're all sailors on this sea of life, we know that storms catch us and we have no warning. And they can catch us blindsided on a, on a stormy night and we feel like we're, we're alone in the world. But like Christy Hennis, or Christy Moore sings, that like life is the ocean but love is the boat. And Sarah's been there through thick and through thin. And we lost some loved ones on both sides through it. And Sarah has proved her caliber is the only way I can describe it. And I know that I dream of a prosperous future, and everybody does, a future filled with fancy cars like the beautiful Rolls Royce we drove in today, a future filled with luxury yachts and holiday houses abroad. But I know, I know that if these things never ever come to pass, I know that we'll have that which life really, really the best that life can offer. And that's our friendship, and that's our family, and our time together and our health. So I love, I love movies, we both love movies, and we were gutted when the cinemas closed for how many months was that? And Goodwill Hunting, in Goodwill Hunting they say a lovely quote where it says that, you know, I'm not perfect sport, and let me say the suspense, this girl you've met, she's not perfect either. But the question is whether or not you're perfect for one another, and I believe that we are. So Sarah, I look forward to many more happy birthdays, surprise destinations, New Year's Eve balls, and all the wonderful things that this life has in store for both of us. And I heard a lovely quote that they say being someone's first love is good, but being someone's first and last love is greater. So thank you, Sarah, for marrying me today and making me the proudest man today alive. I finally like to give you. I'd like to leave you with a story of our an anecdote maybe of Mary and Michael and I love this because it reminds me so much of Sarah and I and the story is that after many happy years of marriage Mary and Michael are in the in the house and Michael's looking in the mirror and Michael is saying God Mary I'm after I'm after getting old I'm after going bald I'm after getting fat tell me something to cheer me up give me a compliment to which Mary replies well well Michael at least there's, there's nothing wrong with your eyesight <laughs> and uh, <laughs> And the reason I love that is because Sarah often calls me in her words, you big Egypt when I put my foot in it. But Sarah, a person with a heart as big as Sarah, can never stay angry with you for long and she always forgives me. And I learn, I learn. So, so and now everybody, I'd just like to kind of wrap up and say that like today is in honour of everybody here, obviously, of Sarah and I and of all our absent friends that are here with us in spirit. So I'd like to finish, you'll be glad to hear he's rattling on for ages. I'm going to finish with a toast. And the toast is, I might ask you to stand maybe for the finishing toast. Toast and then you're off the hook. <laughs> so, so our toast is, okay, to our friends and to our family, all of you here together with us. May the seas of life always for you be gentle. And may the winds of life for you always blow fair. Sean, that. Salute that. Oh, it's